Hey guys, today we're doing something a little different for our video. As you can see, I'm in the office, I'll be in front of the computer. We're going to be talking about uh, designing cabinets to use for your drawer setup. So we have a couple of videos out there on undermount drawer slides and side mount drawer slides, and we get a lot of questions on how we design and sort of set up that process to make that all work together. So drawer slide, drawer box, drawer front, as well as the cabinet doors, of course, but how all that sort of comes together to get to the point where we're actually building that cabinet and assembling it. So we wanted to cover that in detail. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now I think the best way to do this is to actually do it in 3D design space in SketchUp, which is the software that we use, uh, because that's how I set up my cabinets when I'm doing a design process to make all my drawers and drawer fronts work together properly. So the best way for me to show you what I do is to do it. So uh, we're gonna take a bath vanity that we recently built for a client. We're gonna change that over to use a uh, full overlay style. We're gonna do a face frame inset style. And in both versions talk about how an undermount slide setup works and how a side mount slide setup works and what we do in the design process to make sure that once we've got all our parts cut and we're ready to put things together, it goes really easy. So I did put links in the description below uh, to both of the prior videos on the subject, one on undermount slides, one on side mount slides, and go check those out because this whole setup kind of works together. But those are the ones that had all the questions that kind of got us to this point. So make sure you look at those as well. All right, so we are gonna start with the full overlay version of this bath vanity, which is the one we actually built for the client. Uh, and then we'll get into looking at it with a face frame uh, version as well. So as you can see here, we have four cabinet doors and then these here are all pull out drawers. These pieces on the side are just scribers to fit the walls, so anyways. If we turn off our doors and drawer fronts, you can see the inside. So we have our drawer boxes here. And then these yellow pieces are spacers, which actually that's probably where we're gonna start. For the moment, I'm gonna turn off the drawer boxes and we'll talk about these spacers. So what these are there for is to help build the actual cabinet when we're assembling it. So the spaces in these boxes and how the dimensions of this whole thing work, they can be anything that you want. You just have to know how to set everything up from that point. What these spacers are for, let's take these two here for example. If we're gonna install this stretcher piece right here and it's twin in the back, it's tough to position that and attach it, especially in this case, because we're probably going to pocket screw these two pieces together uh, so it could move around on you or it's real hard to measure position hold in the right place and try to screw that in or whatever you're going to use to fasten it so we just use these two spacers and then apply a clamp from this piece to this piece to hold those two together using the spacer and then we can screw that in without worrying about it moving and repeat the process for the back same goes here Without these in there, that piece gets tough to position just because it's floating in the middle of the, this upright. But if we set these in place, now we've got something to clamp it to or hold it down against and we can pocket screw in or screw from the sides or however you decide you want to do that. And the same goes over here for these big flat shelves. We have bigger spacers that go underneath here Again, they don't stay in the cabinet. They're just loose pieces that we put in there for the assembly part of this process. Okay, so that covers the spacers. So let's get those out of here. I'll just turn these off. I'm gonna bring the drawers back in or the drawer boxes because this is where the main piece of this uh, has to kind of come together. And it's not complicated, that's why I wanted to show it in the drawings. 
So we mentioned in the video about undermount drawer slides, how the dimensions are set up. And again, that's specific to my brand of drawer slides that we typically use, which is the Sleece or Salus or however you're supposed to say that. Um, but that's the brand that we use. So that's the setting. So uh, there's a couple of basic things for that. Each drawer bottom edge is going to be three quarters of an inch away from the stretcher piece here. And these stretchers are in there because this having two of these gives us something for that drawer slide to sit on. Um, and, and that allows this to support everything. So our slides can sit in here on the stretchers just like that. And then as I mentioned again in that previous video, the slide is what sets that three quarter inch gap. So these aren't set up exactly right in the drawing. I'm just kind of doing this for display purposes, but the slide here is what creates that three quarter inch gap. So you don't really need to worry about that too much in the design. You just have to know that that's where the spacer is. Those come in more in the, um, in the drawer front setup. So that's how that goes together. So then of course we're going to end up with a pair of slides for each drawer that goes with each uh, box space here in each pair of stretchers. So for the moment let me turn the slides off, bring the boxes back in. So then the other dimension that we talked about again in the video was just your side to side on your drawer box and the opening. So you can make the opening anything that you want. Once again, whatever works out for your layout, your design, what you want it to look like, all those things. The only thing you have to know with the drawer box is you're going to be 3 16 smaller than the opening on each side. So again, 3 16 on each side, and that's just how you size your drawer box. Now your height, it depends on what you want to do here. If you're making your own drawers, you can make it anything you want. Uh, I recommend, what do I have on this one? A little less than an inch. I recommend somewhere close to an inch from the top edge of your drawer box to whatever the next structural piece above it is. You don't want that being too close. You could get away with three quarters, it's probably fine. I usually go somewhere near an inch. If you are buying drawers from a manufacturer, um, typically these heights are gonna be pretty standard. So uh, this is probably a four inch. You know, they're, they're, they're usually like in two inch increments or so. It's like four, six, eight, ten, tend to be the standard heights. So that's why you see these ones down here have a much larger gap because I'm just working with standard sizes here. Um, I can fit an eight, a 10 would be a little too big and you don't need the drawer box to fill that whole space. Okay, so now that's fairly straightforward, right? At least I think it is. If it isn't, please tell me in the comments and I can, uh, I can discuss it more. But again, you can make the cabinet structure, the case, the carcass, whatever you want to call it, anything it needs to be, uh, you know, with height, depth, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can make it what you need it to be to fit your space or what you want it to look like. The important stuff is everything that comes after that to make it all work together. So as we mentioned, the boxes are going to be based on really two things. One is the size of the cabinet that you made. The other, more importantly, is the slides that you are going to use. In this case, the undermount slides and uh, how that manufacturer specs what the box has to be sized for to work with those slides. So whatever brand you're using, if it's if it's Salus or Sleece or Bloom or whoever, you just need to understand the tech specs for that slide. And that initially can be a little difficult and a little tricky, but once you have it figured out, it's the same every time and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. And there should only be a couple of parameters, which is gonna be you know, your, your width of your box and your height from whatever is below that drawer box. Once you have that, you can just plug and play these things and make your drawer boxes the size you need to be. So where it gets harder, and I think where people tend to get more confused and have more difficulty is when it comes to all of the stuff you actually see, your cabinet doors and your drawer fronts. So in this case, again, we are full overlay here and undermount slides. So 
In this version, you can see we've got the four cabinet doors and our five drawers. All of these I've set up with eighth inch gaps between everything. That tends to be our standard for our cabinets. Um, tighter than that gets real, real tricky. If you're aiming for 16th gaps, I honestly, I'd recommend against it. <laughs> um, especially because wood moves, uh, drawer boxes, the door fronts, the drawer fronts, they will shift a bit over time and with weather changes. That's just normal. So a 16th gap is just too small. Things will end up hitting each other. Even if they don't at the time of install and your final adjustment, they will eventually. You also have to figure once someone puts, uh, you know, 30 pounds of stuff in this drawer, is that enough just to cause that 16th gap? To, well, okay, that's a bad example. This drawer, because there's one below it, are you going to close that gap up, right? Anyways, Eighth inch gap is what we go with. That's what I would recommend. So how do we get there? So the doors are less important. So for the moment here, let me turn these off, at least on one side. I'm more concerned with the drawers because that's a little tougher to get right. And what you need to make sure of, especially when you have a stack like this, is that we've got the stretcher piece that we talked about earlier evenly spaced or at least close to spaced behind the gap in your drawers. So what we can do as you're looking at your drawing, you can basically rotate it and see I'm not seeing dead space behind this. I'm not seeing uh, the inside of the cabinet. I'm seeing the front of that stretcher you know that's a quick visual check the other thing that you want to do is turn these off individually and make sure that it's it's going to be centered ideally so to center it we should be 7 16 which is good 3 8 okay Here, let me turn this other one off all these pieces here are going to be 3 quarter at least that's our standard. I would assume most places it is three quarter, 19 millimeter. Um, so our midpoint here is gonna be at three eighths of an inch. So if we turn our drawers back on, which I lost in my mess here, here we go. We should see a gap even off the center line. We don't want each drawer front to touch that center line because then we have no gap. So what we are looking for here is a 1 16th space from the center point of that stretcher to the edge of each drawer front. And that gives us our 1 8 spacing gap between the drawer fronts. So again, real quick, if you put a center line on your stretcher, which would be 3 8 of an inch, you want to have each drawer front spaced 1 16th off of that center line and that creates your 1 8th gap between the two drawer fronts making sure this thing is centered at that point and then everything will line up nice and even if you have a little adjustment to make on the drawer slides which if you're using good slides will have adjustable clips um, you still have some room to play and keep this stretcher behind that gap so you don't see either the different colored wood that's inside the cabinet or just dead space so that you're seeing that same color uh, in that gap and it doesn't stand out. Okay, so again, you can see, so each drawer front is gonna be sized using this same model of your center line on the stretcher so that your drawer fronts center their gap over that stretcher. And then the last thing on that being a stack, at the very top, assuming you're gonna have a countertop on the top of this, whatever that may be, whether that's you know quartz, marble, wood, whatever, I'd go again for an eighth inch gap from the top of the actual cabinet framing to the top of my drawer because we don't want the top of the drawer or the doors, same thing goes for the doors, uh, to be bumping into your countertop. 
because what you should have, or normally what you would have, uh, my countertop is turned on. All right, sorry, I couldn't find my countertop here for a second. What you should have when you have your counter on is you're gonna have some level of overhang here from the face of the drawers and doors to the front edge of the countertop, usually three quarters of an inch to an inch. So we don't want the drawer or the door to contact that counter when you pull or, or pull it open. Um, and if you don't have a gap there, it's gonna be the same problem as here. It's gonna hit it and cause all sorts of issues. So at the top, again, you just want that same gap you're going with one eighth of an inch or so here across the board. Now at the bottom, because this is full overlay, there's no face frame. Basically, we're gonna make the bottom edges of all this stuff flush with the bottom of our, uh, on the bottom of our cabinet, the very bottom panel of that cabinet. And we can get into the whole structure here. This one went on uh, post levelers, so there's no structure below the bottom panel. This is just a toe kick, but that, that's another conversation. We're looking at drawers and drawers and drawer slides at this point. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's kind of the gap structure and that's how we set up um, these sort of stretchers in here that go with the drawers and support our drawer slides. Okay, so in the, in the real design world, right, and what you're probably trying to solve, I know that's what I'm usually doing, is okay, I want or the client wants, you know, the, the bottom two drawers to be the same and the small top one smaller, or maybe they want the top one bigger and two small ones on the bottom. Whatever that is, you gotta know how to adjust for that, right? So let's just say uh, in this case, you know, whatever, we decide we wanna go, we want these ones to be a little smaller, right? We'll just take them down two inches Okay, and now we have a problem, right? Because now when your drawer front's on, well, there's this huge gap, this doesn't work. So, you know, we wanna drop this drawer down on top of the one below it. We're gonna create our eighth inch gap. And then it's gonna look weird, but just as an example, we're gonna stretch this one out to fill that whole space up top but we need our eighth inch gap, so I'm gonna gap that back. Oh, if I can get it to go, I can't get it to go. Hold on. We just gotta size this one down so I can get this one. Again, just one eighth up. And so now, okay, our drawer fronts look great, but if we turn one of these off, we know we got all sorts of problems because our stretchers aren't in the right place. This drawer box here is gonna hit the upper drawer front. We can't open this one without opening this one. We got all kinds of problems. So all that means is we just need to reposition these stretchers using that same rule. So we would take this stretcher uh, and the one behind it. You just turn the drawers off for a moment. So we'd have to move both of these together and we want them Let's say take the bottom edge, pull it down, and then we'll put, to make this easier to see, we'll just put our halfway mark on here for our 3 8 And so we don't have to do all the calculating, not that it's that bad, but let's just say we use that center line as the alignment tool, but remembering we need our eighth gap, so we're gonna bring this back up 1 16th of an inch. And then when our other drawer gets turned on or put on, we keep that gap and we now have the stretcher behind it. And if we turn off, let's see, just these, nope, sorry. So if we turn off one of these here at a time, we can see our stretcher looks good, right? We're balanced over that opening. And we can check there, but we can see our top one up here 
is still a mess. So we just have to do the same thing with moving that these stretchers would have to come down along with the drawer slides and then you would just change the height of your drawer boxes. So without doing all of that, right, this stretcher is gonna come down, this drawer box is gonna come down here. So we know that this box is gonna get taller, this one's gonna get shorter, but that's real easy. All that is is changing the height. It's getting these in the right position, that's the case. And that's how you would adjust whenever you need to change things. But what you wanna be looking at, and the key to this is you make all the adjustments, everything looks good, great, but if you have something like this, right, where this drawer front's still big, and we look in here and go, well, wait a minute, where's our stretcher? There's nothing here, we're gonna have problems. Or more specifically, if I look at this, it's just all sorts of weird, right? Why do I have a structure up here? I have this tiny little drawer on a huge drawer front. It's not gonna work. So that's the stuff you gotta watch out for. But it is fairly simple if you know you want that 1 8 inch gap and you use the center line on the stretcher as a reference, you can kind of shift things around as you need to. So I hope that helps with the drawer front part. The drawers that are over here on the sides, because they are standalones, they're a little simpler. So the drawer box itself is the same thing. In my case, again, because of our brand of slides, it's three quarter inch gap on the bottom, three sixteenths on each side. But then we don't have to worry about too much around it, right? It's just the doors above, which we're gonna have the same one eighth gap here and whatever's gonna be on the sides and to the drawer here. So sometimes if you're making these out of real wood, what we'll even do, uh, or like shaker style, something that doesn't have an outer edge profile, you can even make this a little bigger and trim it to fit as you're putting everything together. But it's just an eighth inch gap all the way around. You don't have to worry about the setup of two other drawers next to it. It's really just your door height. And if you've designed this correctly, left your eighth inch gap at the top, left an eighth inch gap here in the middle, and then you're gonna be flush to the bottom in this case, all of that should work out just fine for you. Okay, so we covered the drawers. Let's get into the doors just for a moment. As I said, I do think it's simpler just because you don't have a drawer box to attach them to, but there is still a, a couple challenges. I think the two key factors with your doors are gonna be the actual sizing and what's around them, what dictates that sizing, and then your, your hardware, your hinges, what makes them work the way that you want them to. So as far as the sizing goes, again, eighth inch gap between everything all the way around, every player, everywhere it's gonna be next to something, we want an eighth inch gap. In this case, we're gonna have these scribe strips over here for fitting to the wall, so we want a gap there and we want our gap to the drawers and to the top and to the drawer at the bottom and between the two doors themselves. Now in this case, you can actually see right through into the cabinet, uh, but at, with an eighth inch, you typically, it, it's not bad to have that. You, you're not gonna see that in practice or in reality. Uh, and you don't wanna put, let's say, um, like, we're not gonna put a divider in here just so you don't see into the cabinet because then that's gonna make that space kind of you know, feel cut in half or, or much less convenient, certainly. It would just be weird. So we want to know basically our full opening, right? And, and you just do a little math for this. Once you know how much space you actually have in your opening from the edge of your cabinet wall here to the edge of the cabinet wall here, and you split that in half and that's your two doors. However, you also need to consider, and this is where the hardware comes in, how much that door is going to overlay your actual cabinet side here. So you can see, again, this is our three quarter panel because we're doing full overlay. The idea is that the door will completely cover or obscure this side and this top, minus our eighth inch gaps. Um, so when our doors are in place, you can see here in the drawing anyway, 
that I have a 9 16 overlay here. And on this side, it's going to be different. We're going to have that 5 16 number and both of our doors are going to be equal size. In this case, 15 and 9 16 and hopefully if I have this drawn right, yeah, same, same measurement width wise. Cause ideally that way when you order or make your doors, you're making for the same size and you don't have to worry about which one is right outer and left inner or whatever, uh, make them all the same. But how do we deal with this difference in overlay? Well, over here on this side, it's because we want the drawer to contact some of this face too, so that when the drawer is closed, we're not looking into the cabinet. Because let's just say this drawer was, you know, flush with or a little over this so we could full overlay the door. Well, now you've got this goofy gap, right? And you'd be seeing into the cabinet. You're going to see this seam. We, we don't want to do that. So, the challenge with this is your hardware needs to be able to accommodate that um, because we're going to have different overlays on the two sides. That just means we're going to run a different hinge. Now, depending on the hardware that you're using, that should be no problem. But again, you just need to have the specs for the brand that you want to use in front of you and available. Uh, in my case, for Salice or Salus, whatever. <laughs> The, there's basically three versions of these hinges. There's what they call a full overlay, which is intended to take this door and bring it all the way to this outside edge if we want. Then there is a half, quote unquote, air quotes that you can't see me doing, half overlay, which means it's basically designed to run, um, here, let me try to put the line in here if I can sneak it in. So half means it will reach halfway across a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch panel. So effectively three eighths of an inch is what is designed to overlay. And then the last one is there is also a half inch overlay. So there's half, which means half the thickness of your case panel, your case side here. And then there's half inch which means it will actually overlay a half inch in this direction. So we can use the door to overlay it. So if you look at where my door sits, that's basically what I'm going to use in this case is a half inch overlay hinge. Now there's also inset hinges, but those aren't relevant here and we'll get into that. Um, and then on this side over here, because we're pretty darn close to that halfway point, we're going to use um, a half overlay hinge, not a half inch, but a half overlay because it gets us close. And then there's adjustment on all of those, right? It's not fixed position. Typically, I can move that door in and out, left and right, uh, depending on the hinge, like one to three millimeters, which would give us enough to come up to this line or a little past this point we're at now, so we can adjust these gaps uh, in post. But in the design stage, that's the, the key, right? Knowing how much space you have the doors to fit in, making sure you have your gaps all the way around and make your doors the same. But then you also have to be aware of how that looks on your sides and knowing that your hinges are going to work with that. Um, if I didn't have a scribe over here, for whatever reason, and I just wanted to say this was going to butt up to another cabinet with a door on it, I would run a full overlay hinge that would pull the door all the way over to this edge and allow me a little bit of play there. Um, but in this case, because I want the scriber to overlap a bit and not see the seam between these parts, uh, that's how I chose to do this one. And again, anytime that I'm going to have a cabinet with, if this was a, dra um, a drawer on the left here and a door on the right here or two doors, I'm going to run the same way where I split down the center of this case piece and then I'm going to run uh, half overlay hinges so that I have the gap in between and they're designed to work together at half overlay. If I ran two fulls, they'd run into each other. 
if I ran two half inches, they'd run into each other because again, our panel is three quarters of an inch wide. So I hope that helps. Okay, so I wanna have the same discussion, but this time around uh, a face frame inset application. Um, so basically same hardware, we're still talking under mount slides at this point and, and the drawer, door, sorry, door hinges uh, are essentially the same, but a little bit different for inset application. So um, we'll get into that here as well. Um, so what we have in this case, instead of full overlays, obviously there's now a face frame to this. So this does complicate things a bit. Uh, inset face frame stuff is super popular right now and I get it, it looks really nice. Uh, it's very clean. Um, and so in this case, you know, obviously we, we've added the face frame, but our gaps are gonna stay the same as far as drawer, front and door interaction between the rest of the cabinet. It's still gonna be eighth inch gaps. You'll notice at the top here, we no longer have a gap because now it's face frame, so that's a fixed piece. So when our countertop is on top of there, there's nothing to interfere with. Uh, at the bottom edge, you'll notice here, we now have an overhang from the face frame to the bottom of the cabinet. And we have changed our cabinet structure because the style we had on the full overlay just doesn't work well with a face frame. So this is probably your more conventional sort of cabinet construction, maybe more what you're used to seeing. But again, I don't wanna to get too much into the case construction. We're really focused on a uh, drawer and door setup here. So I'll tell you the reason we have that overhang on the bottom is now because we have changed to, oh, let me turn the slides off here. They don't need to be sitting in the middle. Um, we want this face frame here at the bottom to be flush with the bottom of our cabinet. Now, a lot of cabinets, you'll see like an eighth inch uh, overlay there on the face frame. And if it's just a cabinet door, that's okay. With drawer slides, I prefer to keep it flush, especially because you're never gonna see the inside face of that. There's gonna be a drawer box here and a drawer front. So you're never gonna see in there. So we don't have to worry about our reveal there. So the reason that there's an overhang now on the bottom is we want this bottom panel flush with the top edge of the face frame, but we wanna keep the face frame width consistent throughout the cabinet. So that means we have three quarters of an inch of bottom panel. The other three quarters of an inch is gonna overhang below our bottom panel and that's okay. That keeps our face frame width consistent and it allows the bottom of our cabinet to be flush with our face frame and let the drawer slides roll in and out without any interference and we don't have to make any adjustments or think about anything there. Now where the cabinet doors are, I also did these flush, but that's just a matter of preference. You could do a 1 8 reveal here so that your face frame sits 1 8 of an inch higher than your uh, cabinet bottom here for this part of the cabinet. And that's fine, it's really just a matter of preference there. Um, I just did them flush in this case to keep things consistent. So when you're building it, that's a little bit less confusing. Okay, so how does this change our setup? Well, obviously we have the face frame in place. So we know we have to change the size of our drawer fronts. We have to change the size of our doors. Um, I did a face frame width here all the way around of inch and a half, which is pretty standard. So it's basically just resizing everything according to that. Now, where you're gonna run into trouble and what you're probably thinking is, well, yeah, but what do I do with the drawer slides? Cause now I have this problem, right? Um, so what happens is, I'll try to grab the inside look here so you can see the problem. So now we have this little bit of reveal here on the inside, in this case, three eighths of an inch. And we get that because we have an inch and a half face frame piece here, but we only have a single board inside the cabinet. So 
there's a couple ways you can deal with this. You could come in here and double up this board and that's gonna be the same width as your face frame and then you don't need to do anything further. Uh, everything will work just as it did in the last design for the full overlay. The other way to do that, and, and it, I guess the reasons for, for changing this, you might wanna save weight, you might wanna save material, you might want that reveal. There's a number of reasons to do it or not do it that way. To me, it's just overkill on the amount of material. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it. It may be the easiest way. The way I more often will do it is I'll actually just create a little shim for mounting my drawer slide on. So our drawer slide is designed, let me grab those just so I can show one here. Our drawer slide is designed, well, in this case, it's gonna sit back three quarters of an inch because we're at our face frame. Anyways, so if we turn the face frame off, our slide looks just like it did in the full overlay version. It's gonna be flush to the face of the cabinet carcass or depending again on your manufacturer, um, I know mine typically gets set back about 3 16 from the face edge just so the drawer works nicely. Um, just depends on which ones you're using. But point is, so it's gonna sit in the same place basically, except we're adding this little spacer in here to compensate for that face frame reveal so that our slide is still flush with the opening where our drawer is going to move. And that's the key. It doesn't really matter where the face frame is, where the side of the cabinet is. The key is your slide has to be flush with the opening wherever that opening is to make your drawer box work properly. And then your drawer box is going to be sized your 3 16 less than your opening. So in the full overlay version, our opening is just the cabinet carcass, right? It's just these frame pieces. But now we've added a face frame, our opening becomes the opening in the face frame. So we just have to adjust our drawer box to fit the same specs within that space. So it's gonna be 3 16 narrower on the face frame and 3 quarters of an inch higher than this top of this face frame piece for my drawer slide manufacturer. And then your front just has to fit within that space. And you can see quickly in your drawing if you're gonna have problems. For example, if this drawer box was sitting up here, obviously it's not going to open because now I know it's stuck behind the face frame and once my face frame is on, that box is stuck. So you just have to make sure that when you're looking at these things, you can see that you have gaps, you have clearance, and then you know everything's gonna work when you actually put it together. So the trick to these ones with the face frame becomes this little spacer. Or as I said, you could just double these up and that's basically going to accomplish the same thing. The real decision point on whether you make these little spacers or you double up this panel may come down to your equipment. Um, in a lot of cases, these spacers come out to odd sizes. For example, this is 3 8 So you could do a piece of quarter inch plywood and a 1 8 piece of plywood, you know, like a 1 8 inch Luan or something. Most of those are readily available. If you stack those, that should be right about 3 8 uh, If you do have a planer, you can just plane a piece down to that 3 8 or whatever it needs to be. Um, or it may just be easier for you to double up this interior panel. Either way, it gets the same uh, result as far as the end product. Again, the key being your drawer box just has to be the right size smaller than your opening and your drawer front also has to be the 1 8 gap all the way around smaller than this face frame opening. Now when it comes to your doors, 
it is the same concept as before, but our hinges are going to change. Now we're going to use an inset hinge. And for Salus or Celiche, I'll, I'll put uh, a link to the, the form. Um, I might even have a download link for it. But they do inset hinges that have spacer brackets uh, that go in here. So basically, it's the same hinge, but they have different mounting plates that correspond to whatever this overlay is. Okay, so here's what I mean on the inset door hinges. You're gonna have this style hinge, but then there's a, a selection of these mounting plates that allow it to work for different insets. So here they give us this table and you can see here, this is like a flush inset. So this is if your door was gonna sit dead flush with the inside of the cabinet case or your face frame was there. Uh, and then if you're inset 1 16th or 1 8th or 1 quarter or 3 8 or half inch, whatever that is, there's a different plate here that allows that to work. So you see in this case, um, this would be like this first one that's flush. This would be like if you're doing inset to uh, the side of your cabinet and there's no face frame. And then here, as this gets bigger, easier to see as you get down here, this would be your, your face frame and then where your door begins. So inch is a little extreme, but it, it's a possibility. What this gives us the ability to do is we can keep our face frame width the same like we want to do to that inch and a half or whatever you decide it is. And then however your cabinet has to be structured internally to make all the pieces work, especially as you start lining cabinets along a wall or whatever that is, we don't have to try to manipulate the cabinet. We can just manipulate our hinge to work with these pretty much across the board standard uh, you know, measurements. We have a lot of flexibility here to get the job done. Okay, so to take that table back to the drawing, to the real application, this is what we're looking for. So in this case, I have a 3 8 inset here on the face frame to the cabinet side on this side. And if we go over to the other side of the door opening, I believe it's the same. Uh, yes, 3 8 again. So there is a hinge and bracket that corresponds to that offset so that we can just use those and it will set the door within that opening with a plus or minus roughly two millimeter adjustment so we can maintain our eighth inch gap on an inset face frame, still using our cabinet sides where we need to be. And then depending on where, if you're putting a cabinet next to this and we want to adjust where this face frame piece sits, or for some reason we want to have this piece sitting, you know, flush over here and inset over here, maybe we, we could if we wanted. And I don't think when I set up the drawing, I was thinking about this, but if we took this face frame and set it flush here, and we set it flush here, now we would eliminate the need to have these spacers in here for our drawer slides, and we could just use a different hinge adapter bracket that would now meet a three quarter inch inset uh, on this inner wall. So we could eliminate this spacer here for our drawers, let me just turn these off. We could get rid of this spacer because now our hinge could be set flush to the face frame here. And so we could save ourselves that spacer in another way that I just realized as we're doing this. <laughs> so this is why knowing your hardware is critical, right? And I'll give you all the reference info in the descriptions below for what I use so that you can have the same tools um, to make all these choices. So as you're playing with designs, as I just did, you may stumble upon a better way to do it. And this is why I do everything in digital uh, before I build anything, because it saves me many hours of frustration, difficulty, and expense um, in the actual build process to do this all ahead of time. So we could have shifted this face frame over, made the doors fit the same way, eliminated our spacer here in the middle, made that a little simpler for ourselves, one less step in the production uh, process, and just changed the hardware on our door hinges. We could keep the outer ones the same without moving anything, so our face frame would stay at that inch and a half, 
we just get slightly wider drawers in the middle and slightly narrower doors on the sides. Uh, the same would go down here because we would require the same spacer here. Yeah, we'd still have the spacer out here. Although we could also push the outer piece over to here, provided we have the room out here in space, wherever you're fitting your cabinet, and do the same thing. So there's all kinds of ways to manipulate this. And that's how I would do it, is to just draw it up and play with it until I get something that I am happy with. The keys are knowing your hardware, knowing your gaps and your spacing and what needs to move and where. If you can put all that together, and believe me, it does take a bit of time and getting used to, but it will work for you. Okay, so our last subject here uh, really is going to be the side mount drawer slides. Uh, I did do a video on setting those up and an easy way to sort of measure and install the spacing on those. So check that video out. I'll put a link in the description and throw a card here on the screen, but this will make more sense. Uh, that will also help you if you are using side mount slides. You'll want to look at that because uh, there's some good information there. So if we still have a face frame cabinet with inset doors and drawers, we can still use side mount slides for that. Um, again, we're going to look to some sort of spacers here, but just like on the, the last version, you can also play with where this face frame sits. So if we take our face frame for the drawer section and just move it over, so it's flush with our cabinet sides here as far as the drawers are concerned. We can eliminate the need for these spacers here. We'll still need these bottom ones because we want to get that up off of the bottom stretcher here. The other thing you'll notice, even when I'm using, let me see if I can just turn the face frame off here. Even if I'm using um, side mount drawer slides, I'm still going to have these stretchers in here. Now, in, in this case, with a face frame, you're really gonna want the stretchers anyway. Even if you went to full overlay, so you don't have any face frames sitting in here, um, you could, like if we were, uh, yeah, there we go. In this one, right, there's no face frame here, but we would still want these stretchers in here, even for side mount slides. And, and let, me, let me explain that. So I, I talk about this in my undermount drawer slide video, again, linked down in the description here. But the reason you want these stretchers to be there is even if this cabinet box isn't that tall, there's still a good chance that this board and this board within this cabinet are going to vary uh, let's say in the distance between these two points, right? Between the two inside faces of those boards. In the depth of the cabinet, chances are that's going to change. And with side mount slides, a 16th of an inch variation in, let's see, how deep are these? Roughly 20 inches? A 16th off is going to cause these slides to, to bind or jam or just not move smoothly and it's going to be incredibly frustrating. Now, sometimes it works out where you just attach all your slides to the side of this here board and this board and everything works out. But I can tell you, and I don't know how many cabinets, it's never worked out. There's always one set of slides that wants to bind or jam or catch or do something. And if I measure very carefully, I usually find it's because there's a variation between the two inside faces somewhere and it can be very very small and it's still going to cause you a headache so putting these stretchers in not only gives you somewhere to set the slides down and screw them in it also provides a little added structure to these two boards so that hopefully your uh, distance between them from front to back in the cabinet does not change and if i've done that in the past, it works, and I don't have that issue. Now, if you're running undermount slides, I do the same thing with the, with the stretchers, but you have a lot more play and adjustment, so you don't really run into the problem anyway. 
Anyways, back to what we were getting at. You can run side mount slides with any of the setups that I've talked about. It's just a matter of changing your dimensions. So the key thing is that you need to know what hardware you're using. With side mounts, it's almost every time this thing, they're gonna be half inch wide right here. I've seen 5 8 ones, but common is half inch. If you've run the stretchers, which I highly recommend, then really all you wanna do is space them up at least a quarter inch off of that so that your drawer bottom isn't rubbing on anything. And this way you can set up your drawer box and your slide at the same time. Again, see my video on installing side mount slides, but that makes it really, really easy. Um, if we've moved the face frame, like I said, obviously these don't attach now, but you get the idea, right? These would actually be over here and they would reach all the way across. Um, but then we wouldn't need these spacers and our drawer box would just get a little bit wider. So we wouldn't have this, we wouldn't have this. And we turn off our face frame. We would just move our slides out and make our drawer box a little bigger. We'd pick up some space on the drawer. Now, of course, if you do that, in this example, now you've got an overhang over here that you have to deal with, so you're still going to have to put some kind of a spacer in here and shrink this drawer down so it doesn't interfere with the face frame. But it's the same concept. You just set a block in there to screw that into. Okay, so I just want to cover briefly here using side mounts with the different applications. So I talk about it more in that video that I've mentioned a couple times now, the, the drawer slide side mount drawer slide video. Uh, so check that one out, but you can use side mount slides like these for, uh, just like in this case, we have, um, it's a little sloppy because I've been playing with this, but these are insets. You could use it for a full overlay and you can also use them for, uh, if you're going to do uh, a more traditional or you're going to have overlay or face frame with overlay. So your drawers overlap the face frame. Either way, it works. Um, Inset and full overlay are basically exactly the same setup. It's just a matter of, you know, your actual drawer front is going to get larger. Uh, to do this, if you're going to do um, face frame and, you know, overlay, right? So the drawer actually sits out here. To do that, the only real change is that you're going to take your slides and your spacers and you're gonna bump those forward so they're flush to the front of the face frame so that your drawer box now comes out here and sits flush to the frame. And of course, once all this is installed, you know, this spacer isn't here anymore so that your drawer can move. But now your drawer front would sit proud of the face frame or on top of it, overlapping it. And again, you just size your drawer front to whatever uh, spacing you want to have here to make it look the way you want to make it look. You just have to adjust each one. I'm just going to move this back. All right. And then a quick note on mounting your drawer fronts, because that does come up a lot. So I really have like three methods for doing this. Um, on inset especially, it can be challenging, right? Because you, you can't hold it, you can't necessarily get to the back. But so the three ways I do this. Number one is typically I will start at the bottom and work my way up. When you're doing a inset like this, I put spacers in here to, hold, to set the drawer where I want it to be, um, which again, for me, most of the time is gonna be eighth inch gaps. So you want spacers. I, I actually use the uh, fast cap mag shims. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for those. I use those for all kinds of stuff. They're an awesome tool to have, but I do use them for, for drawer spacing, drawer front spacing as well. Anyways, uh, in this case, I would have this drawer box and this drawer box out so you could reach all the way down to the bottom of the cabinet. And what I, what I do in that case is I'll take and put a couple of uh, pin nails through the back side of the drawer box into the drawer front. So 23 gauge pin nails, making sure they're not too long and they can fire through the front of the drawer front, but 
two or three of those in there will hold it enough for you to then slide the drawer out with the front attached and put your screws in from the inside. The other method, very similar, kind of the same concept, is I'll actually use double stick tape. I prefer carpet tape. It's cheaper and more sticky. Um, I'll put that on the front of the drawer box here and again set my drawer front in there with all my spacers and just kind of give it a good press uh, on there for a few seconds and then you can reach down inside the cabinet and pull your drawer open and again screw it on from the inside at that point. And the last method and, and maybe the best if you have the ability to know what your drawer uh, pull or your drawer handle is going to be at the point of assembly or the point of building um, that's very helpful because then what you can do is you actually mount your handle here on the front of your or not necessarily mount the handle but you use the the mounting holes that you will be drilling for the handle drill them out a little smaller than you would for the handle screws and then you just put two cabinet screws through the drawer front into the drawer box and now it's secured in place you can open it up screw the drawer front on from the back and then when you go to mount your handles, you just drill those, hole, those same holes out because you're going to use them either way a little larger. And then the, the 832 screws will fit through for your drawer handle. So those are the three methods. Again, uh, pin nails, carpet tape, and then the, the drawer handle. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope this was helpful. I really do. Again, that's why we do this. I say that every time, but it's true. We, I only make these to be helpful and to share the knowledge that we have picked up over the years of doing this. So hopefully this and the prior two videos help you to design your drawer and drawer front and cabinet door setups uh, for your future projects. Please comment below and let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up. Um, if there's other questions or other things you want me to expand on, let us know. We'll do that. We do respond and listen to those comments, so we do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.